After meticulous planning and loads of preparation, the instruments are ready. The lights are focused. Introducing the Covington Surgery Center, a state-of-the-art outpatient surgical facility right in your own backyard. St. Tammany Parish Hospital, world-class healthcare close to home. Hello and welcome to Healthy Living, brought to you by St. Tammany Parish Hospital. I'm your host, Christian Moises. Spring is here and that means allergies are in full bloom. But we have uh, some help on the way and that comes in the form of Dr. Arlette Delcom, who is board certified in family medicine and practices at our St. Tammany Physicians Network's Mandeville office. Uh, Dr. Delcom, Madisonville, I am so sorry. Uh, Dr. Delcom actually also is a, a horrible allergy sufferer herself, and she's going to share some tips on how to kind of beat that sneezing and watery eyes. So thank you for being here. We, we appreciate your time. Thank you. One of the things I kind of want to jump into real quick is give us a brief explanation of what exactly allergies are. Allergies basically are a, an expression of the body's hypersensitivity. Um, it is basically an overactive uh, immune system causes causing symptoms that uh, make people either very miserable <laughs> or uh, causes um, severe life-threatening emergencies. Right. Um, we, I think we want to basically talk about uh, seasonal allergies now since a lot of people have hay fever. Right. We are now in a season where we have a high pollen count. So uh, spring and summer are the worst seasons for these people suffering from hay fever. 20% uh, of the population of all ages will suffer from allergies. Not everyone has allergies. Right. And one of the things about allergies is um, they can start at any age. Um, most of the time people who have a family history of asthma and mm -hmm. eczema or allergy um, are more prone to getting allergies. However, it doesn't apply to me, for example. <laughs> <laughs> I develop allergies to uh, most scents uh, and also pollen uh, about a few years ago and it's been miserable. You know, we talk, you were talking about seasonal allergies and of course this time of year we get the pollen, we get everything in bloom, uh, but it's seasonal versus perennial and you were talking about your allergies related to scents, perfumes and whatnot. Uh, as a child I was diagnosed with allergy related asthma. I went to the whole scratch test on the back and they poked me with everything out of how many how many stabs is that? It, it's, it's almost a hundred stabs that you get of the different serums. Um, I was only allergic to two or three things. Fortunately one of them was cat dander, uh, which would be a perennial allergy. Uh, what, what are some ways that people can kind of combat that? Uh, first of all, let me just mention um, the symptoms that people get when they have allergies. Uh, I do see a lot of people with allergies that think they basically just have sinus infections all the time. They want antibiotics. So it's one of those things that are very hard to, um, for a common person to determine whether they have a sinus infection or an allergy. Right. Uh, for example, allergy sufferers will come with a variety of symptoms, but when we talk about the rhinitis part, uh, it basically manifests itself as the sneezing, the watery eyes, itchy, watery eyes, uh, runny nose, itchy throat, itchy nose, popping ears, clogged ears, and um, a cough sometimes, a constant post nasal drip. So basically, m Personally, I have to rely mainly on simple things um, to combat my allergies because I'm very sensitive to the antihistamines, mm -hmm. the common medicines that people use for allergies. And one simple thing that I do is I use a lot of uh, 
nasal saline um, washes and, and mist uh, to wash off the allergens of my nose, uh, basically. And that helps. Uh, one of the things that I like to use also are the, those steroid nose sprays, and one of them is currently over the counter. And um, other things that people can do to help with some of the symptoms um, are, for example, the key thing actually is to identify what kind of things you're allergic to. I was going to ask you because know, that's one of the big things is diagnosing you yes. know, the difference between a cold and an allergy. Yes, definitely. You know, allergies will go on for a lot longer, clearly. Yes, certainly. Um, the key things is to really find out what you're allergic to. And um, one of the things that people can do is to really try to recall what triggered the symptoms, which is very hard for most people. Um, for example, in my case, I noticed that perfumes and lotions that I wore for many years, I, I would wear them and I start sneezing and having a scratchy throat, watery eyes, swollen eyelids, and that basically triggered me, it triggered, you know, this, uh, um, idea that I was allergic to those uh, products. So the allergy basically is the manifestation is almost like a cold mm -hmm. and um, people may not realize that things that they're using all the time they can become allergic to. Right. Um, other things that people can do to prevent allergy symptoms for example now we do have a lot of pollen in the air People can basically avoid getting outside early in the morning. Um, Any time before 10 o'clock is when the pollen count is usually highest. Okay. Uh, they can also make sure that they wash their hair and take a shower before bedtime. That basically removes all the pollen from the hair, the body, remove all the clothing from the outside, shoes before entering the house, keeping the windows and doors closed. <laughs> And of course, if you have to be, if you don't have to be outside, uh, avoid it as much as possible. You know, you and if you do, I'm mm -hmm. oh, sorry, go ahead. If you do, I usually wear a mask um, for most outdoors activities, knowing that this will help prevent the pollen and all the weeds and uh, spores from getting into my nose. Or it may look funny, but <laughs> it spares you the the, the trouble side effects. Visible. You know, some of the things, too, that I've, I've heard about, you were talking about washing your hair before you go to sleep, making sure you wash your sheets, uh, you know, at a, yes. at a hot water temperature yes. um, to get rid of all that. You know, we could mm -hmm. talk for hours about the different oh. triggers that are out there. There are so uh, many. But so the best many. thing, as you were saying, is just to try to keep a mental note uh, so that when somebody does come to see a physician, they can say, well, you know, I noticed I get really sick when I'm around a cat or a dog. Yes. Or, uh, what not. And the, let's talk, can we talk a little bit about the scratch test? Uh, I call it the scratch test, but the test where you can find out uh, what allergies Well, basically, triggers. allergies are basically um, detected through different tests as well. Uh, the scratch test is basically where they get you exposed to the stuff that you're allergic to. They put it on your skin, uh, scratch it on your skin, and uh, watch for a reaction and measure the reaction. Um, and a lot of times um, it's kind of limited because there's a limited things amount right. of things that they can test you for. So a lot of people may have allergies to things that they cannot detect through the scratch test. Mm -hmm. um, and that actually helps us determine if you're allergic to certain things that we can desensitize your body to. Right. And the allergy specialist basically can make some shots where they get you exposed to the stuff that you're allergic to at incremental doses, allowing your body to get adjusted to it and to tolerate it better. Right. That's the idea of uh, getting you tested. And that helps actually for some people. Those allergy shots can be very helpful. Well, Dr. Delcom, we're going to be talking later on the show about over-the-counter medications and what kind of goes well with each other. Is there anything else that I may have missed about allergies? Or, you know? Well, the idea of allergies is just so people know is that um, allergies are, can be very, very um, minor things, just annoying symptoms, but they can also be uh, very serious things. For example, 
when allergies are manifested through the uh, airways, for example, they can cause some serious life-threatening injuries. Yeah, people, for example, um, who are allergic to certain medications can have anaphylaxis and can die from that. So any allergy symptoms that appears to be causing serious symptoms like swelling or swelling of the tongue, the throat especially, um, swelling of the whole body, difficulty breathing, shortness of breath, and all these symptoms can be very serious and people need to be aware of that. Right. And um, they can be from food allergies or medication allergies, uh, other things that can certainly cause um, death. So short of the long, if you see something that's going to be chronic and is going on for quite some time, go see your physician and get him to check it out. Definitely. Well, Dr. Duckham, thanks so much for being with us today. I appreciate it. And when we come back, we'll be talking with Dr. Kevin McLaughlin, who will discuss what happens when allergies go really bad and when we have to take uh, more severe uh, steps. For the best possible results, how far would you travel? Would you take an international flight? to find a hospital that ranked among the very best in the world for the treatment of heart attacks. For the best possible results in nine cardiac care measures, just how far would you go? St. Tammany Parish Hospital, world-class healthcare, close to home. Welcome back to Healthy Living, brought to you by St. Tammany Parish Hospital. I'm your host, Christian Moises. We're talking all about allergies, and now we're fortunate enough to have ear, nose, and throat doctor and LSU Medical School professor, Dr. Kevin McLaughlin, on the show to talk about what happens when you just can't get those over-the-counter medications to resolve your allergy issues. Dr. McLaughlin, thanks for being here today. Ah, it's great to be here. Uh, you know, we, you do a lot of cool stuff that uh, that can help resolve all those sneezing and watery eyes and sinus pain uh, if medications aren't doing it. You want to share a little bit of those procedures that, that you're uh, that you're kind of doing throughout the area? Sure. Well, I first would want to just reiterate what uh, Dr. Delcom mentioned, which with is which is with allergies. Key thing is environmental precautions, meaning uh, trying to decrease your exposure to allergens. But mm -hmm. sometimes, if you're chronically exposed to allergens eventually things inside the nose change. Um, I like to use the analogy of a callus or a bunion on your foot. If you chronically or constantly irritate the bottom of your foot, eventually your body reacts and part of that reaction causes things to get bigger or thicker right. and you eventually develop a callus or, or a bunion. Well, similar things happen in the nose in response to chronic allergy exposure. Um, I have a model here to kind of describe a little bit about what I'm talking about. Now, this is a this is trying to represent a person, and in particular, it's trying to represent the nose. Now, where allergens really affect us the most is, is in the nose, and the reason why is that you know, our nose is a filter, and the allergens are in the air, and our nose filters out those allergens. And unfortunately, people that have allergies, they overreact to those allergens as they stick to the lining of the nose. And in particular, you got this structure right here called the inferior turbinate, and it does a great job of moisturizing and humidifying the, the air. The problem is, is that in response to allergens, it'll get thick and stay thick. And if this thing stays too big for too long, it'll give you congestion basically a blocked up nose. Right. And everybody with allergies knows what I'm talking about with that. So we try to treat that with medicines, and I know Dr. Delcom talked a little bit about that, but when the medicines don't work, there are some things that we can do. Uh, one of the things that's gotten popular lately is to actually do what's called a radio frequency treatment of the turbinate. And what that is, is we actually place this probe inside the nose and we actually place it inside this structure called the inferior turbinate. And what it does is it shrinks the material or the tissue within the turbinate, makes the big swollen turbinate a small thin turbinate. And if all of a sudden, if we convert the turbinate from the size of my thumb to the size of my pinky finger, figuratively speaking, it right. makes you have a lot more room in the nose and you can breathe a lot better. This is a great procedure because we, we do this in the operating room at St. Tammany Parish Hospital, but this also in adults can be done in the office under a local anesthetic, and we do it in the morning, and people can go to work after we're done. So it's really a, a, a great procedure. And it's instant relief? It's instant relief. Instant relief and then continued relief for about six weeks after the procedure. And then, and when I say continued relief, that is you can, it continues to shrink over about a six-week period. Okay. 
and then you have sustained shrinkage from then on out. Oh, good. And you know, how do you know that you need to get to this point? Is it just when the allergy just doesn't go away, it's just constant, it's persistent, and no medication is helping? Well, that's, that, when, that's when we would call you. That's a good question. It's whenever the medicines, when, it's when you've done a good job following the instructions of your primary care physician, taking your allergy medicines like you're supposed to, and despite being a good patient and taking care of yourself, you still have these frustrating symptoms. Right. That's when it's reasonable to come in and see if there's something else that we can do to uh, make you better. Now, I know you also have some other procedures, some of them pretty groundbreaking that you've done at St. Tammany Parish Hospital that you kind of wanted to share with us today. Well, the other thing is, in reference to allergies, you know, the, is that it can lead to sinus infections. Right. Two most common causes for sinus infections, a cold leading to a secondary sinus infection, and then the other is an allergy flare, which makes a lot of sense. If the nose is inflamed from allergies, the lining gets so swollen that the openings to the sinuses get blocked up, and if the openings to the sinuses get blocked up, mucus accumulates or builds up, and then bacteria might grow, and then you get a secondary sinus infection. Right. In fact, most people will say, oh yeah, I got bad sinus infection every spring and fall, which correlates or co coincides with allergy season. So th there are some different things that we can do. Um, now we don't start off doing surgery, we always treat people medically, right. but if you keep having infections despite taking your antibiotics and taking steroids and doing your allergy medications appropriately, then sometimes it's reasonable to make the openings to the sinuses larger. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like making a one inch bathtub drain a three inch bathtub drain. A bigger drain is less likely to get clogged up and right. less likely to cause an infection. So there are different ways of doing that. You can literally go into the nose and the sinuses and remove tissue and make things open that way. A less invasive alternative is to actually use balloons, not unlike what we use in the heart. In fact, the same engineers that made the balloons for the heart, the angioplasty balloons, actually made these balloons for the sinuses. And what I have here is a rather simplistic uh, prop, but these are the actual instruments that we use uh, in the operating room and in the office. And, and what we do is we actually go in through the nose and we place this, it's basically a straw, and through this straw we place a balloon and the balloon goes up into the sinus, which you can see right there, and then after you do that, you actually have this inflation device, which then actually inflates the balloon and stretches open the opening. A little okay. bit like a jack stretching opening a, uh, something. So, and does that provide permanent you know, relief and permanent uh, widening? Yes, it sure can, it sure can. So it's a newer, less invasive, uh, attractive way of opening up the sinuses. And what's attractive about this is that uh, in children, uh, it allows us to open up the sinuses in a uh, less traumatic or damaging way, and um, which still has to be done in the operating room. And then uh, and in adults, uh, under local anesthesia, we can actually do this in the office or the operating room. Okay, and I know that we're showing uh, our viewers today also a video of, uh, of another procedure that, that, that can be done. You wanna talk a little bit about what, what they're watching right so now? There, there are two videos that we have. Uh, the first video is, is actually showing what I'm, I showed just a moment ago with okay. the radiofrequency ablation. And what it's depicting is when the, you have this uh, wand that goes into the turbinate or into this structure that gets big in response mm -hmm. to the allergies. And what it does is it releases some energy and causes the turbinate to uh, shrink. Okay. Okay. Uh, our second video uh, shows some animation where uh, a wire is being thread up into the frontal sinus and over that wire a balloon is threaded uh, traversing or spanning the opening to the sinus and then the balloon inflates opens up the opening and then allows the mucus that's accumulated in the sinus or build up in the sinus to come out of the nose. Okay. Well, Dr. McLaughlin, I really appreciate your time today showing us all these different procedures. Is this, do you do a lot of these? Is this becoming, uh, as chronic allergies become more severe, are you seeing a lot more of these procedures being performed? They are, but I, I have to stress that the most important thing with allergies is uh, environmental precautions. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're allergic to dogs and you're in a room with one dog, you got a little bit of allergies. Right. If you're in a room with eight dogs, you got lots of allergies. So, you know, our, our treatment shouldn't be surgery right off the bat. Right. Treatment is prevention followed by medical therapy. But in those unfortunate patients that 
are, are good patients and they do what they need to do and still have symptoms despite doing that, then the great thing is that we do have these surgical options that are relatively speaking non-invasive, which allows us to get rid of these frustrating symptoms that for so many years people felt like they just had to live with. Right, and again, it's knowing your body. It's, it's knowing your body and knowing when you need to ask for help. You know, the big thing is, is that most people say, you know, I live in Louisiana, you're supposed to have allergies, I'm supposed <laughs> to feel like this. And that's just not true. That's You're not, not supposed true. to, and you don't have to. And you don't have so, to. So, well, thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. We'll see you next time. All right, great to be and, here. And uh, when we return, we'll be talking about those over-the-counter medications uh, that you can help to combat allergies. They're the movers and the shakers. They're the ones who change our world. And they deserve places designed especially for them. Built with kids' specific needs in mind. The latest technology in the caring hands of our dedicated pediatric specialists and primary care physicians. Helping kids feel like kids. St. Tammany Parish Hospital. World-class health care for children close to home. Welcome back to Healthy Living, brought to you by St. Tammany Parish Hospital. We're all about allergies right now, given that the pollen counts are high and it's allergy season in South Louisiana. Uh, but one of the first lines of defense you can take are the over-the-counter medications you can get at drugstores and whatnot. Uh, to give us a little insight on what you should be looking for ingredient-wise and maybe kind of what medications are best for what uh, symptoms is uh, Charlie Jostrom, who's Department Head of Pharmacy at St. Tammany Parish Hospital. Charlie, thanks for being here today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank You're, you for inviting me. No problem. You're all about medications. You, you are the guru. You can tell us everything we need to know. Yeah. Um, so let me go ahead and start off. Over-the-counter medications are really the first line of defense when it comes to allergies. Absolutely. And remember, a lot of the medications that are over-the-counter now were originally prescription medications. And over the last few years, they've proved to be safe medications. And so the FDA allowed them to be uh, available as over-the-counter. And, so, uh, and so they have a, a long, many have a long track record of safety and effectiveness. And so they really are the first line that people should consider. But knowing which is the right product is where, the, exactly. where, where it's important. And that's one of the things that we want to talk about. Uh, we're going to share with viewers today kind of some of the ingredients to look for and, and what what matching the correct ingredient to solve the correct symptoms. So if you kind of want to talk about some of those ingredients, we can kind of dig in right sure. there. Well, and, and you know, it depends on the symptoms you present with. Uh, and classically, the ones that you see in this time of year are the classic runny nose or uh, runny eyes, uh, the post-nasal drip, and that's what they, you know, essentially, that's where the antihistamines are probably the first line of treatment. Uh, now, there are two basic classes, and I'll just, in simplistic, there are the less sedating, which, you know, uh, cause less drowsiness, uh, and those are the, are the uh, claritins or the uh, you know, raggedine. A it's day a quill compared to a night quill. Right, right. right. Uh, and uh, then there's, you know, uh, Allegra, uh, and Zyrtec you know, are the three that are most commonly available. Now, all of these medications have been out long enough to where there are generic equivalents, and, and they should be every bit as effective as the brand name product and t typically are less expensive. I was going to ask, because I'll, I'll go to Walgreens and pick up, yeah. instead of picking up the brand name Benadryl, I'll pick up no. Waldrill, and I've kind of compared the ingredients, yeah. and they look pretty close That's to each other. That's a very other. common question that patients will ask, well, how do you feel about the generics over the brand names, and my question back is, I, I know I hate to, you know, when you answer a question with a question, but it's saying, how do you feel about it? <laughs> I, you know, I personally, I use generics, but that's my preference, right. and, and I think you need to decide your preference, whether you feel better with the brand name or the, uh, or the generic. And uh, it's about the ingredient. It, the, the active ingredient is the most important thing, and, and so clearly, uh, they're the same. Mm -hmm. you, know, the, you know, the generic and the brand name have the same exact uh, active ingredient, the same strength, and so that it should be, it should give you the same effect. Now, some cases you got to be, you know, look at, you know, whether, uh, you know, in some products they have a longer acting version and a, and a short acting version. Now, with the less sedating and about, okay, typically a once a day uh, type of, so it's the, you know, they're all the same. Right. Um, 
And so the, the more sedating ones are the older ones, like the Benadryls and the chlorotraumatons. And, and they're very equally effective. They just can produce a little bit more sedation, and that may be difficult for people, you know, if they're driving or working, uh, depending on what type of work they do. And so, but they've been on the market for many, many years, and they're very safe. And what, what are some of the, the key ingredients people should be looking for when they're reading those labels? Well, and, you know, particularly uh, looking for the active ingredient and right. check with the pharmacist and make sure, but clearly that when they put them on the shelves, they usually put them right next to each other. Mm -hmm. So you see brand name and generic right. right next to each other. Now, when it comes to the liquids, you have to make sure you're looking at the other products in the liquids because sometimes they have sugar in them, sometimes they may have alcohol, not all of them. Glycerol is another additive that some people can really not you know, handle well. And so uh, you want to look at all, you know, ingredients uh, that may, you know, present us some problem, particularly in people who have hypersensitivities to certain right. products. Color is another one that some people have reaction to. Using color. certain medications with other, if you mix a ibuprofen with a Benadryl and a Mucinex, is that Problematic? Typically, it typically is, you know, that is not a problem. In fact, I think they do have some combination products like mm -hmm. that. Uh, and, uh, but you want to make sure that all those products, you don't, there's no, there's no contraindication or any problems that you may get, you know, like patients with uh, severe heart failure, they right. try to tell them not to take, you know, the, the Motrins and all that because it potentially could make their heart failure worse. Uh, you know, just like the liquid products, if they have sugar in them and you're a diabetic, mm -hmm. you, gotta, you, you, have to, you want to use caution with those products. And so knowing all the ingredients, and clearly one of the things that's, you know, I, I can, can't reinforce enough, you have a pharmacist there. Right. And that's what they're there for, uh, is to answer any questions you may have. And so if you have any questions, stop. Talk to your pharmacist, you know, there, and make sure that you know it, you feel comfortable that whenever you purchase, it's the right product for you. And that's and that's some great advice because we were talking uh, right. before about uh, you know a pharmacist isn't there just to fill a prescription. Right. I've never actually talked to a pharmacist right. at, at any of the drugstores about you know I have this symptom. Yeah. You just don't think of that. So right. definitely some good advice. And I think next time I'm, I may be going to talk to my pharmacist. And that, and that, the reason, the reason I say that is that they're readily accessible, uh, as opposed to many physicians or, nurse or other practitioners. You have to make appointments. The pharmacist is there, right. and you know some have 24-hour services, some have you know specified hours, but they're there and they're there to answer your questions. And I would you know it, it will pre prevent you from you know number one picking a wrong product or pre uh, potentially even picking a product that may be harmful to you. Right. Any final thoughts on over-the-counter medications? Well, there's a lot of, if you have like nasal stuffiness, uh, there are typically, those are the decongestants, and those are the ones you have to go to the counter now and ask the pharmacist for. Now, those are, you have to use with caution if you have high blood pressure, uh, if you have heart problems, or you have potentially even heart arrhythmias, and, and so, because those can, you know, you know, cause more problems with right. those conditions. Uh, there also are products uh, like for cough, the, the, the dextromethorphan. Again, uh, those are usually you ask the pharmacist for. There are also combination products that have a combination of decongestant antihistamines. Uh, the classic NyQuil, which has a acetaminophen right. and a cough suppressant. And uh, you want to make sure that, that all those ingredients, that, there is, that you will have no problem with those. Uh, and, and I always caution patients to say, you know, make sure that you have all the symptoms that, that, that really those combination products right. are used for. Uh, the, the things that, uh, they're also topical like nasal sprays, and I think it was mentioned earlier about saline, is, nasal saline is probably one of the best products to use for, you know, as a first line treatment right. for, you know, uh, nasal stuffiness or, or, run, or runny nose because it clears out the allergen. Um, and so I would tell you that there are a lot of, you know, and one of the newer products that's, again, been out for a long, long time, and I think one of the previous physicians mentioned is the nasal steroids. Mm -hmm. We now have uh, a over-the-counter nasal steroid product available to you, uh, which is fairly recent. And uh, so now you even have topical nasal steroids available to you as a first line to try, and those, and those again, are common things we use for seasonal allergies as first line. 
Well, great information. As always, read the labels. Read see, the labels. Talk to your physician if you have any concerns right. before taking it. Clearly, a lot of the labels will have, you know, if you have these conditions, you know, ask your physician, ask right. your, and, and those are important. And if you're not sure, because sometimes, you know, I'm getting that age where that print is so small, <laughs> yeah, it's hard to read, ask your pharmacist. Well, great information. Charlie, thanks so much for being here. Pleasure to be here. And thanks for being with us today. We'll see you next time.